The cost of IT in business can be staggering. From hardware and software expenses to services like internet and phone, you don't need to spend a fortune on IT to succeed. If your organization spends more than $500 monthly on any service, or you're considering signing a long-term contract, IT Enabled can help you manage your technology and minimize your costs. Contact us today to schedule a free consultation. IT Enabled, we're here to help. Hi, I'm Tara Watson Watkins, President and CEO of the Lufkin Angelina County Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to the Connect Podcast, connecting business to the community. Here today with my co-host, Blake Polino of BP Media Group. Welcome back to the show. We appreciate everybody listening again. This week on the podcast, we have Greg Weatherby of the Lufkin Daily News here to share his history and his journey to coming to Lufkin and our newspapers dying and how the news media has changed over the last few decades. So let's get into that now. Well, Greg, welcome. We're excited to have you on the podcast. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. So you are new to Lufkin. So let's kind of give your background history to the listeners so that they know who you are. Well, I'm originally from Alabama. Okay. My uh, grandfather started a small newspaper in a little town called Piedmont. We didn't start it. He bought it uh, in uh, the 50s. Okay. And uh, my dad went to work for him. I went to work for my dad. And um, after about six years of running things myself, I said, you know what, I think I want to go out into the world and, and, and try my hand at some other stuff. And, uh, so, uh, people ask me, how long have you been in the newspaper business? I'm 57 years old. I got my first job in the newspaper business when I was six. I didn't actually start getting paid <laughs> until, <laughs> until the early nineties, but, uh, yeah, I've been, been doing this all my life and, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't know how to do anything else. Yeah. Wouldn't want to do anything else. I love that. Well, you've seen the newspaper industry really changed then over the years. I have. Yeah. So let's mm-hmm. talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly there. Okay. Then. Sure. What, yeah, how's what that have, changed kind like, of over the last... What have, you, what have you seen change that you miss? And what have you seen change that you love the change? Well, you know, people in the newspaper business is, is notorious for reporting on our own demise. And uh, frankly, it's it, that's a little skewed. You know, what I miss are the... Uh, the heyday mm-hmm. of the newspapers when, you know, you were talking, you're talking about, you know, seven days a week, two editions, you know, a morning and an afternoon edition for some of your larger papers in your metro areas. And, uh, you know, just having, having that availability mm-hmm. of, of a printer product to you, uh, in, in different formats. Um, I, I'm as an old newspaper guy, I miss picking up a newspaper every single morning and flipping yeah. through it. A lot of newspapers don't print seven days a week anymore. Um, so I miss those times. What's exciting about the new times, uh, the new what we're what we're going through with now is, you know, it's it's exciting as exciting right now to be a part of this business. I think as it's ever been because we're in the middle of an evolution of a change where we're going from that daily newspaper yeah. that was delivered on your on your doorstep every afternoon or every morning to where we're we're turning into a 24-hour news agency with our websites with our uh what we're able to do with breaking news with our apps and 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 sending push notifications to your telephones and and those types of things uh we're diversifying in 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 our business models where we're uh you know we just don't put out newspapers anymore we got newspapers we got websites we got magazines we're doing events we we're, we're really truly a one-stop shop for for our advertisers mm-hmm. because we can do so many things now that we couldn't do used to we hey you can we can sell you some spots in the paper and there you go now we can we can do multi-platform campaigns that involve tv digital print ads commercial print all the all the things that you need nice. as, as a as a business owner to uh, to promote your business and doing just one of those things is good but you need to you really need to reach out because you need to we're, we our our motto is meet our meet our audience where our audience is right and uh and that's what other business owners are doing and should be doing is you know where do we where do we go out and you know these people are everywhere now they're not just sitting at home waiting for the newspaper they're mm-hmm. online they're they're watching tv and we can reach all those segments of that audience so mm-hmm. it's it's really exciting to be a part of that right now and watch us grow and change yeah, yeah. It's an interesting dynamic, right? Because the the it, in its heyday, right, when it was just the print ad, mm-hmm. 
um, a newspaper's revenue comes from people subscribing and buying the papers and the ads that are in right. it. So you were limited in the space of how many of those ads, you know, it couldn't just be all ads, right? There had to right. be content there, but it's like now as it's changed and evolved and the world's gotten a lot bigger and it's like, well, we can put ads in a lot more places than we used there to be able go. to. So there's kind of the, the pros and cons of, of how that changes uh, as far as the business. So for people uh, listening to this, so, are newspapers dying? Like what, that's a, a, probably a, a popular question. You talked about reporting on your own demise a little right. bit, but uh, talk to us about that. How's that? They that aren't going? dying. Right. Um, you know, it, uh, have they changed? Absolutely. But uh, you know, I read this article in Time Magazine several years ago and it was, it was entitled, Are Newspapers Dying? And uh, what it got into was at one time at, at newspapers heyday, they were, uh, they were second only in profit margin to commercial banking. Hmm. And so they were, they were making a whole lot of money. And, the, and we're talking 35, 40% profit margins, which in most industry is just unheard of. I mean, it's, it's incredible. We're still operating at a 10 to 15% industry-wide mm -hmm. uh, uh, profit margin. So, sure. you know, we've changed. We're like, as I just said, we're diversifying. We're going to meet the audience where the audience is. We're much more about what do you want as a reader, as an advertiser versus, you know, here's what you want. Right. And that was, that was something that newspapers sadly used to do. Hey, interesting. Here, here's what you like and you better like it. You That's know, right. now we're much more, Hey, what can we do for you? Yeah. How can, how can we help you? So, um, no, they're not dying. They're, Good. they are changing, they're evolving. Um, and it's, 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 as I said before, I, I don't know if there's ever been a more exciting time to, to be involved in this industry and watch it as it, because it changes fast. I was, I was uh, getting, uh, when I was interviewing for this job, I had a guy ask me, he said, so where do you see the newspaper business in, in five years? And I said, gosh, I don't know where the newspaper business is going to be in five months. Right. Things are changing yeah. so fast. So, uh, you know, it, it's, and keeping up with all that, it, it's, it's a challenge, but uh, it doesn't it, get stagnant exciting. though. Huh? It doesn't get stagnant. No, though. no, you <laughs> you won't get bored in this yeah. job. I promise you. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't get stagnant at all. So let's talk about the Lefkin Daily News. What do you offer your readers and advertisers? You know, we've got we've got digital advertising, which is which is a new a new area for us that we're we're starting to explore. We're we're, we're starting to finally understand how to monetize those uh, the digital side of it. Mm -hmm. You know, for so long newspapers we sold you a newspaper but we just put our content up online for free. Right. And um, which in retrospect was, was not the greatest idea because we need to, I mean, we've got, we've got bills to pay. We've got journalists to pay for. We've got, we've got expenses that need to be taken care of. And people started learning there. I mean, the public's pretty savvy, you know, we'll, uh, we can get it for free over here. Why don't we need to pay for it over here? So, uh, you know, we, we, we offer a digital product, a product, a lot of digital products. We're doing a lot of magazines. Mm -hmm. We're uh, Charm Magazine, which um, you guys have probably seen here in sure. town. Uh, we do a, a football, uh, Pontywood Blitz magazine. It's a, a football preview magazine. Um, Best of Lufkin is a program we do where we're putting out a magazine that w was that with that. We're doing events. Um, we just had our senior expo mm -hmm. up at the uh up at the uh, convention center we did a, a women's expo right after i first got here uh there's a holiday expo coming up what we're really excited about is we're doing a uh, 40 under 40 mm -hmm. and uh we we'd done this in I'd, another place i'd worked we'd, we'd done a program similar to this and some other southern uh, newspaper uh who is our uh, parent company have done that and i said let's let's give this a try and what we were scared of, I said, okay, can we call it 40 under 40? Are we going to have 40 categories that have people in those categories? So do we need to call it leaders under 40? I said, well, let's, let's try 40 under 40 and cross our fingers and hope that we can get people nominated in these 40 different categories. Good gracious. Yeah. This thing <laughs> is it out exploded. of control. <laughs> I mean, it is so much bigger than we ever imagined that it would be. Um, we got multiple people in every enter every all 40 categories um we have uh fi i think it was fifty-seven thousand votes wow we had eight thousand not uh, eight thousand people vote and you can vote multiple times There's okay. the, but uh you know uh we've got a new we've got newsletters that's another segment that we another thing we offer uh our readers is 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 newsletters that it kind of 
give you a, a more in, insightful look at, at, at some things. But we, we asked for opt-ins on those, and we got about 12,000 people who opted in on our newsletter. And the important thing about that is 40 under 40, that's an audience that the newspaper business throughout its inception has had Missed. trouble sure. reaching. Mm -hmm. You know, and I hear people talk about, well, we, we, we don't reach that, that 18 to 35 audience. We got to find a way to reach that 18 to 35 audience. We've never had the 18 to 35 audience as a, as a consistent reader. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know about you when you were 18 to 35 or you, I know me, I didn't really, I mean, I was in the business and didn't, didn't focus on it as much. Once you get 35, you start having kids, you got kids in school, you're buying homes. All of a sudden, what's going on at the city council meeting, what's going on at the, uh, with, on the county level, your taxes, your schools, those things are important. And so newspapers start playing a bigger role. So, um, as I said, we offer apps, uh, we've got uh, our website, we've got magazines, we've got expos. You know, we just did a, um, a survey with Charm, uh, our Charm readers, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat right quick, but yeah. these, are, these are some really cool things that we found out when we did this that, um, let me find my notes here. 50% of the people who read, this was like 500 people responded. 50% of those are the, are over the age of 55. 81% are female. 70% of the people who read Charm are not newspaper subscribers. So there's a whole another segment mm -hmm. of that market that we're able to reach with Charm Magazine. Uh, 70, uh, I'm sorry, 42% of the people we surveyed said they read every single issue. And the one that just blew my socks off, 40, 42% of the people who read Charm look at the advertising and it influences their buying decisions. That's powerful. And so that's something that we, we, we didn't know what we didn't know. Yeah. And so that's another thing that we offer. And those are, those are we're doing an advertising survey right now. We're going to put all this together and put a, uh, put a plan out when we go out and talk to these advertisers. Right. Hey, the reach is, is, is deep mm -hmm. and it's important. So, well, we partner with you on our connect, connect magazine. Absolutely. Um, and we love doing that. It's, you know, it's a great way for us to show our investors and what they've got going on, but mm -hmm. also to be able to share stories about things that are happening in the community. So that's been a long partnership uh, between Left and and Daily and the chamber. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a, a public service element to news, right? Mm -hmm. So talk about it, how it, it works in terms of serving a community, right? So there's a little bit of a, like, a, if something major is happening, we kind of expect to just be able to um, open up an app or open up a newspaper or a website and it'd be there, right? right? So talk to us a little bit about that, how it kind of serves a community. You know, that's well. our most important job mm -hmm. is, is to keep our, uh, our readership as our communities mm -hmm. informed, protected, mm -hmm. and entertained. Um, there's been several studies done lately, and this goes back to the demise of newspapers, where a lot of communities have lost their newspapers over the last 15, 20 years. There's a cost to you, to you, to me, to the residents of the town when a, when a local newspaper goes out of business and you don't have that local news media there right. as a watchdog on what your government's doing, your local government, your city, your county the government's doing. Study showed this was from a 2020 study, so it's a, a few years old, and I imagine it's, it's it's gone up a little bit. But studies show that you're um, without a local newspaper in the first year after it closes, government expenses increase five to eleven percent, and you pay for that. We all pay for that when that mm -hmm. when government costs more, we pay more through our tax dollars. So it helps in that it helps in that regard, you know, keeping people, and especially what we were talking about earlier with the uh, 24 hour. We can do the breaking news on our website. We can do the breaking news on our uh, push push you towards our website with uh, with our app. Um, you know, if there's traffic problems that you need to know about, if there's a fire, if there's a car accident, if there's something you need to know about right then, mm -hmm. you know, we're able to notify you at right right then and there. And uh, keeping keeping our public uh, informed, keeping them uh, and entertained. You know, reading the comics. We've got uh, we're lucky to have uh, some really good. Um, guest columnist uh, Gary Stallard almost said Jack. Jack's his brother. I worked with I worked with his brother in uh, in uh, Longview, but uh, Jack Stallard, uh, Dr. Roberts, uh, uh, several people from the community that uh, that people love that type mm -hmm. of stuff, they you do. know. 
And uh, so keeping people informed, keeping them protected, keep letting them know what goes on in the government, letting them know how, and more importantly than here's what's going on, here's how it affects you. Here's okay. why it's important that you know this. And, uh, you know, one of the one of my pet peeves is, is I'll hear people say, well, you said in the newspaper. No, we didn't say anything. We told you what somebody else said. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to decide you know, which, which, what your opinion is going to be on that. It's up to us to just tell you what these people said. So, uh, the only time we say something is on the editorial side. So when we do in our, when we're doing our op-eds, but, uh, no, it, uh, it, uh, it's, it's important that, that we, we keep this community and all the communities we serve, um, we keep them informed and protected and make sure that everything that they need to know, they do know. That's right. Well, we love working with y'all. We love working with your reporters and your journalists. You know, we've, I think everybody in the building, everybody's, all your people have all of our cell phone numbers. And, right. uh, you know, I, and I tell them all the time, anytime you need something, you call me. Call, don't call the office, you call my cell because right. I'm always out. But, you know, um, you're, you're always doing great things to help support us, to help support the, the different things we've got going on, whether it's Forest Festival or, um, you know, the annual banquet celebrate business, things like that. We just appreciate y'all support Absolutely. and helping spread the things that we're trying to do to the community. And you know, in a lot of ways, out. we're in the same business. A hundred percent. Yeah, it's very 100%. similar. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. we thank y'all very much. Well, we, so. we appreciate it. And yeah. We continue. We want to continue doing that. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Truly you appreciate you coming on the show and, and chatting with us and with our viewers. And I want to thank you so much for listening again this week. Go do us a huge favor. If you will share this podcast with someone who is interested in the type of stories that we tell, it just helps to broaden that reach and let more people hear these stories that we tell every week. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. Bye.